Oh, boy. Hello, can you see me? Oh, my God, I've had the worst time. I've been trying to get on the Internet. My phone would not allow me to get on the Internet. Oh, okay, so you see me and hear me. Welcome to this edition of AKT Celebrity Reads AKT Underworld. I'm your host, Alexis K. Tyler, and I'm going to be doing part two of Nipsey Hussle, uh, Coronavirus and Cross Ashkidom. I started the first one last night. I'm sorry I'm starting so late, but I couldn't get online. For some reason, the phone wouldn't let me get online. Thank you, Nick. I was concerned about this color. I usually don't, I don't like white, so I don't like beige. I didn't know how they would look on my complexion, but she liked this outfit. Isn't that pretty? I got this. Let me see if I can turn around so you can see. Isn't that gorgeous? All the beatings, all the stones. It's like a showgirl. A showgirl outfit. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> you like that? I was hoping you liked it. And I was thinking of this is technically we are in March 31st, 2020. So this marks the year anniversary of uh thank you alvin i'm so glad you said that i love old school hollywood <laughs> i love it this marks a year of the to the date of the assassination of nipsey the great Aramis joseph ashkadam a very sad day a very difficult time he is still having a very difficult neighbor that's why Roberta Thomas neighborhood. <laughs> Thank you for the hearts. I, I love the hearts. Um, no, we're not doing a vagina par segment tonight. We, we are honoring Nipsey Hussle. This is part two from last night. Uh, if you want those, there are plenty on YouTube. Um, he is, I've been speaking to him all day. Uh, since last night, basically all week, and uh, this is, I'm very tired, I'm very, very drained. Obatala, thank you, Gwen. So Obatala would, would be the head, right? He's like the god, is he close to the god, Obatala? Mm. I'm very tired, I'm very drained, but uh, let me see, make sure you can see his candles. I wanted to do this because I, uh, hotel, I don't know what you're talking about, Arrington. I wanted to do this because he still wants to speak. He's still very upset about a lot of things. Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. And, uh, I'm going to continue to give the messages as he, uh, gives the messages to me. I'm trying, hey Chance, I, I'm trying to, you know what, I kind of didn't want to repeat what he's been saying to me the past couple of days, but I'm obligated to repeat it. Some of it's so healthy, uh, well, can I say not healthy, but it's heavy what he's saying, and I want to say, you know, my readings, because so many people get upset with me about my readings. They are for entertainment. Um, I already dealt with the Hotel Arrington. I told you what I saw about the hotel and, and the houses around there. I kind of don't want to repeat a lot of things that Nipsey says to me because I don't know people that know him. Thank you, Pamela. I don't, I've never been out there, I've never lived there uh, in that area. I don't know the people there. So I, I get a little bit afraid when he says things to me because I don't have a way to confirm what I'm hearing. And sometimes I, you know, it, it's scary when I hear the things because 
I wonder, am I hearing him correctly? So a lot of times when he says things to me, I don't say things right off. Um, hi, I'm Monica. I, I like to sit with it. I'm, and, and some of the stuff I'm going to say to you tonight is something, some of the things I've been sitting with for months because I want to make sure that I'm hearing the things correctly. Because I'm like, oh my God, am I hearing that? Did Nipsey say that to me? And I'm like, Nipsey, are you really saying this? And and to make sure you are, let me just, thank you, Del, Val, Del Valley. Please correct me if I'm saying that wrong. Del Valley, Nicole, Tequi, Tequila. Please tell me how to pronounce that. Del Valley or Del Valley, if I'm saying that wrong. I'm not trying to disrespect your name because I know I hate it when people spell my name wrong and say my name wrong. They spell it A-L-E-X-S-A-L-E-X-X-Y-S and it's A-L-E-X-Y-S-S. I mean, just chop and fuck my name up. Just to try to spell it the way they want. And I hate that. So I don't want to do that to you. So I have been holding this and I'm like, Nipsey... I'm going to let you speak to me again over the next few months and uh, because some of this stuff is so inflammatory that I'm going to say and I want to apologize before I say it if I say it incorrectly but it is for entertainment purposes only it's you know of course alleged uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a spiritualist so I get these things through the spirit and people get mad at me and I always say, because I'm a spiritualist and I don't know these people when these things come to me, they're in the spirit. If you can prove what I'm saying is wrong, I will gladly correct it. I'll apologize. I'll correct it and I'll take it down. You know, I, I'm in a human body. I have no problem correcting things. I, to be honest with you, I didn't want to say, I didn't want to do the reading last night. Uh, but I said it because I was obligated to say it for Nipsey and, and then he came back today and he said more to make sure I have it all and then he he reiterated what he's been saying to me about the situation about Cross and Cross's mother uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and say it and about some of his friends associated with her hold on let me get this paper I don't think I I got all the papers. Make sure that, uh, and I'm gonna kind of go over again some of the stuff last night when my phone just drained and and everything went out. Um, so first, I, I want to what I want to do. I want to show you these two. Uh, these are my products. Isn't that pretty? That's the blue and gold. And that's the blue jar when people order with. Let me see, because I think this is an order already. I don't know if you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's, can you see it? How beautiful that is? That's the gold cream. Um, that's for the body. Can you see that? It's actually gold. You can see the gold in it. And that's the blue and gold jar. And then I have two others um, that Nipsey liked and he picked for me. These are beauty creams that go in here. Isn't that gorgeous? That's the 50 gram jar. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? He picked that one. Uh, is a mount you when your sources start to drink. Yeah, Alvin. And then he and then here's the smaller one. And you can get these if you want. With the gold creams, I have an anti-inflammation cream. If you wake up puffy, um, there's an under eye lightning cream. You have shadows and bags. Now I know I gotta fix my lighting. I was just so tired to put my light kit up. So if it just looks like shadows there, um, yeah, I have things for that Arrington. I really don't have shadows up under my eyes. It's just, as you can see, see that's the lighting. I'm just so tired. I didn't feel like setting up the light kit and stuff that my beautiful friend Lasagna got for me. So she was she was like, tonight, call me. I'll walk you through tonight. I'm like, girl, I'm too tired. I don't even want to get on camera. I'm so tired. And then, too, you see these. I make the products like you saw the cream in that jar. That jar has already been sold. So I, I can't 
You can have it, Ruben. You just tell me what you want. I'll make it for you. <laughs> but that, yeah, those are the ones that Nipsey gave me. You see how um, creative and incredible he is and still giving. Oh, thank you, Alan. Yes, he just looks like that with the lining. See, there's nothing under the eye. No wrinkles. Nothing. <laughs> I've, I've learned how to, I had some. Whenever I see it creeping, I'm like, oh, no. I'm very tired, uh, Arrington. I have been talking to Nipsey a lot, and I feel so bad for him because this is very, very difficult uh, for him. He, uh, of course, doesn't want to. Thank you, Pamela. Doesn't want to be on the other side, especially without his choice. Um, being trapped, okay? on the other side so let me if you have them you can do your libations with the the smoke of your choice with the drink of your choice i'm going to do the bacardi gold rum uh what do you mean Ladonna? where am i what do you mean you can't see me thank you elvin yeah no wrinkles and no lines for the haters <laughs> gracefully you don't have to look like an old hag you know what I'm saying? because that's you know people like you said um they want that to happen to you because they don't like you but you can defy age and you can defy gravity and luckily I've, I've learned how to do it and um i mean i've actually addressed some of that angelique i'm not gonna go through all that already if you haven't kept up with it and kept up with my readings other people readings you have to go back and check those because you know we've been reading him a year now so we've addressed a lot of those things a lot of people have addressed a lot of those things Hermes, Joseph, Ashkodom, Ashe, Kinson, Ashe, Ashe. Mm. Ah. Okay. Boy, let's go uh, light him a cigar. Y'all know what he likes. You know, but I don't have any. You know, he likes his good weed. His uh, Marathon OG, a lot of really good kush. I'm sorry, baby, I don't have any. <laughs> but I know some other people, they have it. And they're lighting it for him tonight. Um, just going to light him a cigar. I won't stay long because uh, I, I didn't finish a reading. I've been so exhausted. I got some of the important things that I could that he uh, he wanted addressed that are really like uh, whoa pretty heavy to me that he brought up so I'm going I think I'm probably gonna come back tomorrow which is later today actually because this is his day this is March uh, 31st so uh, I feel obligated to celebrate his day. I'm going to come back for him. some reason I've been thinking about his mom whoa he's been thinking about his mom a lot and he's been around his mom I think she's been thinking of him too you know this has to be extremely difficult for her you know that's her baby <sighs> thank you I'm gonna light up for him Hi, James. There he is. I just want to do libations for him. Okay. Can't do them too long, my smoke detector. Done started tripping. Which goes off.
just want to um, give the spirits this is such a powerful time, a time to get in here. And I just want to relax and let them come as they feel like it. Because I know this is such a heavy time. Let me see if he wants to come. Because I know he has so many places to be in his family, honoring him and to speak. And I'm sure so many people are honoring him today and paying homage and libations to him. So I just want to take my time. Let him thing. I guess I'll start where you all said, the people that were here last night said towards the end and the phone started going out that what I started to say in the end, you couldn't hear me when I was saying I was worried about cross because Nipsey was worried about cross and being around people that the mother, his mother had him exposed to that were not good for him because these people dealing with entertainment, rappers, music, athletes were also involved with child trafficking networks and cults. There is this woman that has this organization supposed to be spiritual that's like a spiritual cult and these people bow down and worship this woman in this cult along with males in the cult and the male that's a part of this cult she, the spirits are saying and Nipsey said that he saw them doing sex rituals consensual sex rituals to control and manipulate women for money and doing ayahuasca trips drug induced sexual orgies but also manipulating and controlling the women with money, but also having the women in these circles without their husbands or, or boyfriends to watch over them where they are swapping sex partners. And the women are also doing bisexual acts. And these men that these women look up to, respect, and trust secretly sleep with men are sleeping with men that the women are dating as well as sleeping with him. And these men are not divulging that they are bisexual because they are spiritual and supposedly conscious. These women think these men are safe to trust and having tantric sex with them, tantric sex orgy, sharing them as partners. But they are not divulging that they're also secretly bisexual and are affiliated with gang members that protect them in these cults that secretly do business with them in these cults and they're also sleeping with some of these gang members that were affiliated with Nipsey, some rolling 60s, as well as some bloods are in LA that are secretly bisexual. Now I understand if people are doing this as adults and they're, they're stupid enough to be caught into these things and worshiping humans as gods and Egyptian gods and goddesses, but they are exposing their young children, the young boys to being molested by men and the little girls to be molested by men and women. And Nipsey is very afraid. It's, yes, a spiritual group and this group, these people bow down to the men and women in this group as if they are gods walking on earth and they give their money, their cars, their resources to these people and actually give their lives over to these people and have moved in or
or moved to L.A. to be with these people, giving their whole life like a Jim Jones type of cult. But what they don't know, one of these men that is over this group of one of the leaders is sleeping with men and likes to sleep with young boys, likes to, Nipsey told me, and of course, you know, this is for entertainment purposes only. And this is what, what ups, has upset me so bad, you know, the past couple of days. And I said, I'm just going to sit on this. I, he told me this a few weeks ago, but I sat on this. Because I wanted to see if maybe I heard it wrong. Or I'm trying to listen to see if he told it to me differently. Or maybe I heard it incorrectly. And he did not change the story. He said that when some of these women have these young boys and these cults, some of these men that are over this cult, I saw one in particular that is also a gang member and a rapper, tried to be close to Nipsey and Nipsey said, I didn't want him close to me and I didn't want to perform with him because I saw he secretly, see, this is what they do, okay? It's just like, okay, a lot of these men in the conscious community or the con science community that a lot of you look up to. I've been around these people, okay, and they've tried to indoctrinate me and initiate me years ago when I came out with Vagina Power 2006, 2007. Um, you know, I just really don't get into it. I don't fuck with these people because I realize they didn't really like me. They don't really like women. They like to dominate, manipulate, and control women and screw women that can pay their bills because most of these men don't like white people, don't like the system don't have a nine to five, but yet they don't have their own resources. So what they do is they'll find women to take care of them, get food stamps, section eight, welfare, live off the women, abuse and mistreat them. And then tell them I am polygamous. I am supposed to have more than one woman. Or we have like a community in a group where all the women get together and work together, put our money, our checks, our stamps, our resources together. We have children. I get all of you pregnant. We all work together. We have a compound together. I'm not working. You all work and take care of me and bring all the money and resources home. They're usually going to check with a woman. She's a public speaker. If, if you're a public speaker, they want to put you out front. You draw the money. They take all of your money. Okay. You bow down and worship them as God, and they disrespect you and see you as somebody beneath them, but they're always fucking someone else. You're going to have to always deal with them fucking someone else. But what they don't tell you, a lot of these men that are in the con science community are either ex-cons, they've been in prison, drug dealers, liars, um, trick people with different scams, take advantage of women, but they have a lot of knowledge. So they know how to run game. They've studied psychology and master psychology. And a lot of them are five percenters in the nation of Islam or come from there. So it's just another hustle, another con in the conscious con science uh, community. They don't really like women. And some of them are in secret Masonic societies. Hey, Gen G. But what you don't realize that when these men, even in the Muslim community, it has gotten so bad in the Muslim community that a few years, even Farrakhan had to speak out about these grown men fucking boys in um, the mosque. Because a lot of those Muslims become Muslims in prison. And they read the Quran and they come off very religious and spiritual. But a lot of them secretly suck dicks or get fucked. A lot of them undercover fuck men. And they have... These secret Masonic societies and what you don't know is a lot of them to get initiated have to have a sexual act. Yeah, and drug users. Thank you, Nick. M. Powers. Get initiated. Thank you, Ginger. You like it? I love it. Yeah. By having sex with a man. So they're more loyal to their brotherhood and the men and will beat a woman's ass and use her or take advantage of her if easy to turn on her but wouldn't turn on a man that they look up as a master teacher because you don't know he done mastered this nigga ass. And a lot of these men in this conscious community that are so spiritual and can speak to you so eloquently and have so much knowledge that they won't give to a woman, they'll make her pay for it and sit in the audience and praise them and worship them and build them up and follow them around but they're not going to give you that knowledge to study. They will make you pay them and follow them about them as if they're literally gods in a fucking human body. A lot of them will ask these women to fuck them in their first chakra, which is in their rectum with a dildo and said that'll help them open their consciousness up or tap into the pineal, tap into that nerve 
that's connected to the rectum and going up. You know, anal sex is very pleasurable for a lot of men and women. Uh, the men, what is it's like the vasal nerve. I, I, I got to look up the whole name for it. It goes in the nerve. And when a man's prostate is being hit directly through the um, anal rectal cavity, he can come harder and quicker. And a lot of women find it very pleasurable to have anal sex. Makes her come in her vagina. Uh, because of moving through the anal rectal cavity. There's a lot of nerves back there. Very, very sensitive. So a lot of these women are looking up to these spiritual men. And they don't realize that a lot of these so-called spiritual men. And that deal with all of this metaphysics. Thank you, Mike. We got to set something up so you can, we can reintroduce me to the ATL. They don't realize these men sleep with men sometimes. These men are closet bisexuals and they like boys. And that's why Nipsey spoke to me about this. He's worried about Cross and who Cross's mother is exposing him to. And he says again, and I've held this for months to see, for some reason he feels that his son... Now, I see the son. The son is very clean. He looked like he ain't missing no meals. Kind of big. A beautiful little boy. But I see the son. When I look in his eyes, he has very deep, piercing eyes. The son misses his father. He's lonely. For some reason, I feel the child is lonely. And Nipsey feels the child is neglected by the mother. Mentally, emotionally, and psychologically, and spiritually, he doesn't feel that the child is with the mother every day and all the time. Like the mother cannot really bond with that child. Um, for some reason, I, you know, allegedly, maybe I'm getting this wrong, but the mom has kind of shut down. And I do see Cross's mom is sad and she has a lot of regret and she does deal with depression. And when I asked Nipsey what that was about, he, I looked at her and he can see her. And he said that there's a lot of regret in her because she misses him. A part of her misses him. And I said, well, why does she miss him? Or does she miss you? Because she's in love with you? He said, no, she misses me. And she regrets what she helped do to me. He's still saying that she helped to dig his grave. He said because she realizes that she messed up a good thing and that he loved her. Yes, the double cross. He said she, she misses the way he used to treat her. And he spoiled her. She knows he loved her. He knows that she knows that he would have taken care of her and really been good to her. And this... What, what she was promised or what she thought she was going to get. Because she still had something to do with this out of anger and revenge for him. She wanted to pay him back and get him back because she could not control him. And she couldn't get him to marry her and manipulate him. He found out she was fucking other people. So he started fucking other people. Once he saw this and he actually said he saw her looking through his papers. He saw her spying and he, she took money from him. And men were telling her and sent her in on him. He still will not change that. I will change it if he changes it. Just like I'm saying, honestly, I see sadness in her. I'm not going to say it's not sadness there and depression. Because that's, I'm not, I'm not going to not say it. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to be as honest as I can. But he's saying it's not sadness and depression because she's in love with me. And she was in love with me. She used and manipulated me and tried to control me. Now that a year's gone by, she didn't get everything she was promised. He said she has the sadness and regret for herself. Not because of him or having heartbreak because this man was killed. It's because, it's, you have to realize, this lady is very selfish, very self-centered, and very narcissistic. So as a result, she shut down towards cross. She's not in love with that baby. She's not emotionally bonded and giving her whole heart. 
to that baby is the sadness for herself. Even though she got a new house, he showed me she has new contracts and new deals because of what happened to Nipsey. I see the contracts in her house. I, I see them in this room. He showed me where she's made deals um, from sleeping with men. He allegedly, you know, this is spiritual reading. He showed me she has two sons. We know she has two sons and she treats those sons differently and she sees those sons differently. I think the first son is also very handsome, very well-groomed. That son is very intelligent. It looks like somebody has worked with him. I don't know if she has nannies. I also pick up she has a sister or sister figure and people that watch Krauss or that spend time with Krauss. So I don't know if it's a grandmother or her mother. People take care of that child and spend more physical time than she spends with that child. The child is lonely. He doesn't have a lot of emotional time with his mother. Physical time and emotional and spiritual time are different, okay? The Nipsey told me that the first child belongs to his father's father. So I say, okay. Um, the first child is Lil Wayne's son. He said, yes, but the child has been already indoctrinated and given to Lil Wayne's father's father. That Lil Wayne is his physical father, but that child belongs to Lil Wayne's father. The child is very intelligent. The child is also psychic. The child also gets his messages and gets his control by a male demon. You will see. As the child gets older, the child's brilliant. The child's a brilliant mind and he didn't get it from his mother. The child doesn't belong to the mother. The child belongs to the father's father. Who's the father's father? Lucifer. The child has been already given to Satan. That's why the child is very gifted. Little Wayne already knows that his son by Puma Baby Mama has already been given to Little Wayne's father, which is Lucifer, the Baphomet. That child already knows what he's supposed to do, what he's supposed to study. His mind, a lot of times, is somewhere else. He is not controlled by his mother. He's controlled by Little Wayne's father. The god of music. It's been that way. This is not new. Nipsey's child, Cross, does not have that father. That's not what I said, Trish. Um... He's a different father. His child, Cross, is in limbo. Cross. Think about that. Cross's father, excuse me, and that's what he started going through. Because we're in a leap year as we celebrate this. We're in March 31st. Like right now is March 31st, 2020. Third month, 31 day. 2020 year. You add that up. 3 plus 31 plus 2 and 2. You get 11. Which represents the tower. And we're in 2020. The year of truth. Speak truth and become enlightened or shut the fuck up. When I went to. He brought me. I was taking a nap. I didn't. I was so tired that I didn't know I went to sleep. And it's that song. Away in a manger. As you were singing about the baby Christ and the three wise men. One of those three wise men is the Mahdi, was a black man. And he brought myrrh as an offering. And myrrh was rare and very expensive during the time. So it also would mark symbolically like the future death of the Christ. This is the way Nipsey was assassinated, set up had been followed, this is what he told me, had been followed, had been threatened, and they had tried to kill him before. 
and he was told he was going to be killed. So right now we're dealing with the three wise men. I have to come back to Mark's. I didn't get to get into all that. I've been so tired. I didn't, I, I slept most of the day. I didn't get everything done, but I know we're also representing dealing with the constellation of Leo and we're dealing with the Sphinx and the constellations that line up with the Sphinx in Egypt. And we're also dealing with who he is, Horus, which would be Osiris. And we're dealing with what he thought was Isis. And that was the one that betrayed him. Puma baby mama. When we deal with Leo, the constellation we will deal with, Leo is the god Apollo. The god of the sun and the ruler over the horoscope Leo is the sun. <coughs> we should also be dealing with the son of God. Leo, and we're dealing with the god Apollo. It's also the god of light, music, poetry, knowledge, myth. And it says Apollo was known for entertainment. Olympus. Should I write this with? Dealing with Olympus and with tunes played on his golden lyre. Leo is entertainment, the, the entertainment sign of the zodiac. And when we deal with seeing when Leo is present in the sky at night, it's right now. Between January and June, Leo is visible in the north and the southern hemisphere. And that is who Nipsey is, the Leo. So when we deal with the God or, or Jesus and we're dealing with his birth and how his it was prophesied and foretold, and then we deal with um, the king who wanted to kill the Christ, the Messiah, thinking that it would prolong, that was King Herod. He tried to lure the three wise men to speak with him to help set, set him up so that the baby could be killed. The three wise men decided not to meet with Herod and go and visit and bring gifts to the baby Christ. Um, and then we deal with astronomers. They also made attempts to link that star to the celestial event, such as the conjunction of Jupiter, Venus, and a comet as a comet or a supernova. So he brought those things up. I have to deal with and break down more. I just mentioned them to you because that's what's coming up right now. And it ties into his son, which is also named what? Cross. And his father was just like the Christ that was what? Crucified on a cross. So literally this child is upside down in many ways. The child's spirit is not at peace. The child is not at rest. That's a very sensitive child and a very intuitive child. He thinks of his father. He misses his father and he feels his father and he sees his father. So this son, Cross, is not balanced like his big brother by little Wayne. He doesn't have the same foundation as his older brother. And he doesn't have the same father because his father's not Lucifer. His father's not the Baphomet, which is bisexual. And Nipsey did not sell his soul. And Nipsey did not participate in homosexual or bisexual acts. And this is what bothers him so much because he knew they wanted him to participate in the acts inside of the gang and inside of the music industry once he signed the deals. So... Some of those, I hate to say this, some of his so-called so associates and friends would like to do something like that to his child to connect with and get back at Nipsey. To turn his son into something what he wouldn't do to like to humiliate and degrade or like lower and equalize Nipsey and bring Nipsey down to their level by doing that to his son, Cross, who was given a really bad name. Put that child as a sacrifice and as a victim to bind him like they bound or attempting to bind the father to use the child to leech off of or to take the lifeblood and the birthrights from his father and leech off of and live off of 
the child. The child was a keep a nigga baby, basically, or a baby to use to guarantee profits, security. And she couldn't break the daddy down and make the daddy marry her and lock him in. So she's still very angry and resentful about that. But she rushed right in to get what she could and went right for the custody thing. And for some reason, when he was showing me her, Black Sam came up. When I was in this house where she was, I don't know if she talked to Black Sam or Black Sam trusts her. Black Sam comes to her house or she goes to Black Sam's house. I hope Black Sam don't trust her, don't eat nothing from her, don't drink nothing from her, don't let her prepare nothing. Because there's something about Black Sam and it's something this lady is still trying to get access to because her handlers have told her there's still something else she needs to get. Although they've given her money and she has helped to steal millions from Nipsey. That's what people don't know. She has a lot of money that she's gotten as a result of Nipsey's death and what she helped steal from him. And she's been promised contracts and television deals. I've seen her sign contracts on the low where she wants to blow up and become a movie star off of this blood sacrifice of this man's life. That's what this was. We'll watch her and we'll see what she gets. And what opportunities or what television show deals or movie deals come up. Because we know she didn't have any before this man's death. We know she didn't have a Puma deal before this man's death. Nobody was really paying her attention like that before this man's death. And you see, he's the only one, only man that really put her in his music videos. So that that is, that's, this is, I still say, and he has not told me differently. I, I wouldn't want to be punished and I wouldn't want to upset him by lying and said he said something that he did not say to me and you see I said this last year and this man still has not changed the message that he has given me um and he's also saying for you all I'm not saying all so-called black people I'm saying you all who feel and believe or know your lineage that you have the blood of Israel running through your veins that you have Hebrew ancestry and you speak even if you don't speak it it's good to learn it you have Jewish ancestry you speak Hebrew if you feel led to that he's saying it's very important right now you all want to get ready for the Passover feast because right now we are dealing with the plagues of Egypt from the book of Exodus. And we are close by it because Passover begins sundown April 8th, 2020 to sundown April 16th, 2020. And on the Jewish calendar year of 2020, they're saying we're really in the year of 5780. So you will have to go through the rituals of Passover. To have that coronavirus and these other virus and plague pass over your house. Now I ain't talking about them. If you talking about them black Hebrews that be on that goddamn corner that hate women. And be up there in New York on the corner. And them black Hebrew motherfuckers there. I ain't talking about them. And then them cults and have them fucking restaurants. They don't like women. And they don't respect women. And they believe they can fuck you and any other bitch that come by and you're going to accept them having a lot of wives and a lot of goddamn bitch. I'm not talking about them. Because when you're dealing with, you don't, you don't need to do those. You can do this on your own. Or you can go to a synagogue. You get to know God and to study for yourself. Leave them niggas alone, goddamn it. I ain't talking about no nigga Hebrew shit. Now, you, you want to go over there, take your goddamn ass over there, but keep me out of it. Don't say that I told you and that what the fuck I'm talking about. I done been around them. Went over there and ate that hard, thick, tough cornbread that upset and clogged my bowel up. And listen to that damn bullshit. They, they tried to lure me in and tell me I can't wear no makeup and I got to wear my hair nappy and my hair don't even fucking get nappy. And I got to wear some sackcloth with an old towel or an old belt around my goddamn waist and some old nurse shoes. 
and sit up there and clean up and shit, and get fucked all in the ass, and then watch them. Because I would sit there and watch them. The same thing they tell you can't do, let a woman come in with makeup on or half fixed, looking good. They break their goddamn neck to talk to her and sneak and stick a dick all up in her like a Chico stick. But then tell you, you can't look at no man, you can't talk to no man, you got to give all your money, your food stamp, your check, and your fucking house and your car over to them, over there in the goddamn West End. Downtown Atlanta, I know what I'm talking about. This is not what I heard. I used to hang over there. Cause I wanted to really research the shit to know what the fuck I'm talking about and got them standing over there in some old goddamn rundown apartments and they have to get up and get their ass up there and cut them carrots and chop them fucking collard green up and shit every day for free and exchange for room and board Why them men are getting super rich and why they leader Ben or me was over in goddamn Israel Sending the money over there, and the men was free and could come and do what the fuck they want to. And I used to try to support them getting a bowl, a little bowl, a collard green for five and six dollars. Then somebody that used to work over there with them came out and told a friend of mine, them them same goddamn collard green that they get it out there in the goddamn ground. But then I tell you, they organic and raise a special way. Them same collard green, I can go over there damn Piccadilly and get for a dollar and probably 50 cent for a goddamn bowl with some smothered chicken and goddamn cornbread. They sell them fuckers for five dollars. But tell you they organic and they graze them in special soil and a special goddamn garden. I guess and have them under special spiritual light that they shine on them at a certain time of the day and the night. See, I've been round this shit. Man, I done been fucked over or, or almost fucked over by a lot of these people that say they got them spiritual. And it always, I end up backing up from, it, it always come down to one or two things. A dick in your mouth. A dick in your ass. And they hand in your goddamn wallet. I done seen women over there walk around. Told what lady bitch told me over there. They sick the bitch on me. Couple of bitches on me. Let's go talk to the sister. See that we can bring her in. I went to a couple of the servers. And she talking about, you know, Alexis, your hair is so beautiful. I just hate to see that you're going to have to cut it all off. I said, who the fuck you talking to? There's another Alexis in this bitch. Because it ain't me. Like, why would I do that? I don't have a relaxer. It's natural hair. It's my natural hair God gave to me. Like, why would I have to do that just to join you? I can see if you're talking about we, we're not with chemicals. We're not with relaxers. But I don't have one. So, why would I have to be bald to be in here with you? Well, you know, I'm just saying, I said, oh, you're not talking to me. I, I guess this is, this is a deal breaker. I'm going to have to deal with you all reading the Bible in and out, quoting it to me, and then telling me how the Bible says I got to let you fuck other people, and then I got to come in here, and I got to look really like a plain Jane. I got to take a step down and not be attractive. And then when other women come in here with makeup on, the, in the secular world, you don't tell them you're not going to serve them food or take their money because they have their hair pressed, relaxed with makeup on and high heel shoes. But then to join you, I have to step down. And I remember this one lady had a scar. Her, her face was very uneven. Her neck was black. She was fat. And this was a young girl. And I said, well, you know, I make products. Why don't you want to even out your skin? She said, well, if God wanted evened out, then God would have said, but you weren't born looking like that. You weren't born having that burn or that scar there. So let me get this right. The men can keep their hair and skin and stuff groomed. But if you have a scar or accident on you, you have to keep it like that. And she was young, like in her 20s with a real fat. She had L.A.'s and L.T.'s. L.T.'s, long titties. L.A., long ass and a long goddamn stomach. And they was okay with that young-ass girl looking like that. Told her, 
If God wanted that different, God would nah. That's why God put natural resources and doctors and prescription and shit to get your motherfucking ass together. Because anybody that hang in the sun and don't protect their skin, even though you're black or you're called black, if you don't take care of your skin and exfoliate and protect it from the sun, it's going to tan, it's going to burn, it's going to wrinkle, it's going to be uneven. I used to have a black neck. I used to have black booty cheeks and black knees. And now you see I don't. That's not normal and that's not natural. But the more melanin you have, the deeper it's going to lock in when you don't protect it and you don't take a bath and fucking exfoliate it. And take care of your skin properly. These same niggas, like they tried to tell me I was wrong. Because I didn't want to walk around with that shit on me. Something's wrong with you. But they'll break their neck looking at a bitch that's flawless. And don't have that shit on her. And so it's a way to control and look down on and disrespect women. So I'm sorry to go there, but I said all that to say... I ain't talking about them goddamn Hebrews. Anybody that wants to take a woman's power and break her down and tell her what she can and cannot be, and he's the only free one in the relationship, you need to get as far away from the motherfucker as possible. I don't care if it's your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your nigga that you're screwing. Because you should never want to screw any man that gets up out of the bed and verbally berates you and degrades you. And then wants you to slide your fucking legs over so he can slide his dick in your ribs. Huh. You don't need that goddamn shit. So, Nipsey was saying, that is what we used to, we need to do. While all y'all are panicking and scared, you don't waste your time and your life in fear. Yeah, that's all it is, pimping. That's all it is. Spiritual pimping. And and you prepare. You don't spend your life being afraid. Because that will lead you to failure and ruin. You educate yourself and you get knowledge to survive in this end time. And some of the things that are really good, you want to take high zinc, high elderberry tea, elderberry syrup, and high buffered vitamin C. You want to have your vitamins and your mineral supplements to cleanse the body, your herbal colon cleansers, to keep the body cleaned out. You want to build the immune system up. And most you want to do is stay away from negative people. Of course, protect yourself when you're out. Even when I get my packages, I put my gloves on and I keep my rag with my water and my Clorox right by my door. So when I get, I don't get them right off. I let them sit out there for a little while. But as soon as I get them in, I have the bucket of Clorox water and I wipe all the packages and I wipe my hands, my gloves before I open them. Yeah, sure. That's good for the thyroid. Thymus, you want to build the glands up. Especially here in the upper respiratory. And you want to take glutathione. Because that helps to eat up the virus and protect the lungs. But also, so does the elderberry syrup, the elderberry tea, high vitamin C, and zinc. Okay. Wash those off, and then I don't know who put the packages in there, so I wash the inside of the package off. I wash the product off what's inside of it with the Clorox. I just put a little bit in my bath. I don't care if no Clorox get in my ass, because, you know, in the hydrogen peroxide, because that kills the virus as well. It's coming to hang in the air. It doesn't have to hang in the air if you spray in the air and you wipe your things down doesn't have to hang there. Don't, don't be an idiot and wait the four days they said hanging in the goddamn air. Take control of your life. Take control of your thoughts and your actions. You don't live in fear. You'll be destroyed by living in fear and dealing with negative people. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, you scared me from the light. So prepare. Educate yourself. Get knowledge. Stay away from negative people that always got something negative to say that live and feel like a punk bitch. Always goddamn scared of something acting on them. Everybody's not going to die from this disease. The world is not going to come to an end at this point. There will be deaths. There will be trial. There will be tribulation. This is not the beginning of the depression. We started experiencing the ripple effects of depression from 2008 with the real estate and the housing and the mortgage crisis. It's just gotten worse and we're still dealing with inflation. Deal with it. This is not the first time the world has been through this. If you look back at history in the Great Depression and the Spanish flu, we've been through this before. Our ancestors have been through this before. Would you say, Philanda, I just woke up. Thank you. I'm glad you like it, Philanda. I'll try to get, since I know you all like these, I will get, I don't know if you can see it. 
a stand up. See how pretty that is? Yeah, it's a coochie cutter. That's <laughs> All I'm a coochie. I love it. It, it feels so good. It's very soft. So you want to look back at history. Most of you people don't know history. We don't know our history. To get caught up in fear when this happens as if this is the first time it's happened. And this is not the first time this has happened on this planet. Okay. And a lot of people didn't survive. And a lot of people did. And everything started over. And the stock market crashed. And people jumped out of windows. And people killed themselves. And then the stock market started over. A lot of people just don't want to study. They don't want to learn. They get caught up in fear. Oh, I'm glad you see it, Ginger, because, again, I I don't see it. Um, yes. No, you didn't stop me. Uh, so, yeah, I said all that to say Nipsey is very worried about his child and what the child is exposed to. And then he got into some deeper things. Lord have mercy. Um. Uh, Hold on, let me get my goddamn drink. I'm about to keep drinking. I'm going to just, I hate to say this, but, um, yes, you can, Nick. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Nipsey, I'm just going to describe what I saw. Nipsey took me to this house and the house outside, it has a sidewalk going up to like a small porch, like a little small step up porch, not a big long porch with some grass, you know, the nice designer grass on the left and the right side. Maybe he has a couple of columns on the porch, just a simple porch, maybe a small awning over the porch, basic door. It's not very extravagant, kind of just like flat, like a light color house. I went through the front door, like the house is one, the door is not the same color as the house. The house is light colored, kind of a basic square house. I go into the house and it's a small foyer right there. I turn, I look to the right. There's a set of steps on the right wall. They're not in the middle of the floor. They're on the side on the wall. Looks like if I come straight in and I don't go to the right to go up the steps, there's, I walk down a little hallway. I don't know if that's the kitchen to the back of the staircase. If I walk straight back when I come in the door, looks like to the left, there might be a, a separate room here. Maybe something to the right before you get to the steps. Open windows. I see sun shining in. It's a sunny area. Like this is California, okay? I go up the steps. It looks like when you go up the steps, I have to go to the left. Walk down a short hallway to the left. There's a bedroom to the right. That's where the light was. It looks like there must also be another separate room. If I go past this room, we go in. He shows me with right here in the middle of the hall, the bedroom uh, on the right. I can go a little bit, a few steps further. There's another room there. Like I had a door closed. It was dark. Okay. I go, I stand and look in the room. And I see a woman. And she's having sex with this man. And the man is light-skinned. He's kind of heavy. Said he got a little stomach. And he got his hair cut low. This man knows Nipsey. And this man was supposed to be a friend of Nipsey. The lady that I see in the spirit looks similar to Cross's mom. And this man, I also see him affiliated with the All Money In Click. I saw, I see a couple of these All Money In Clicks in this house. 
And thank you, Nick, for putting my cash app link up there. And this man has been talking to Cross's mother, talking about Nipsey, low rating Nipsey, because he's always wanted to have sex with the baby mama. There are several men in Nipsey's clique that wanted to fuck the baby mama while she was with Nipsey. And this man is making her promises. You know, I'm going to be here. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to treat you better than Nipsey did. You know, and she's like, I know Nipsey fucked around on me. And Nipsey fucked these women. Yeah, but she was fucking them too. Um, when he saw that he, she wasn't the dream girl, he started fucking other people. She was fucking other people already. They told him she was a pass around. He didn't want to believe it. And then when he saw it, he found it out. He was very hurt. And he started doing his own thing again. Okay. This guy, she's like, he's like, yeah, I know who Nipsey was fucking. And she's like, really? So I, I think it was this girl, that girl. And the guy goes, yeah, I will tell you the girl's names. I'll tell you where they are. I, I, I know where to find them because I was actually with him when he was fucking around with some of them. I'm listening. I'm like, Nipsey, are you serious? You want me to say? He said, yeah. He said, because they did that to me. He's like, it's a lot of things I know that I wasn't going to say anything about. He's like, but they think that they got the ups on me because they physically killed me. He said, but I'm the goddamn ace of space in this motherfucker. They ain't going to get away with goddamn doing this to me. He said, this guy, and this is really, you know, all this stuff is for entertainment purposes, you know, it's alleged. <sighs> the baby mama is a bully. And the baby mama is dangerous. Now, I thought Tanisha was bad. And I thought Tanisha, you know, because Tanisha's the type, he said, I'm just going to tell you everything. Tanisha, Lord have mercy. Okay, let me finish this part and I'm going to get to Tanisha. Tanisha's a bully. Tanisha would know that, Tan that Nipsey was fucking another girl or that the girl would come around the marathon or, or where they hanging at because Tanisha can... Is real freaky and like the fuck. And they would do group sex together. She thought she could hold on to and control Nipsey. She could suck a dick, but she could also eat a pussy like and suck suck a pussy like you could suck the chrome off a goddamn bumper. They fucking sucking. She eating pussy and sucking dick. Letting him fuck bitches, thinking that gonna hold him and goddamn control him. He was young. You know, they went, he's experimenting, and they, you know, he would think it was funny. Because they trying to run mind game on him or control him. He running they motherfucking ass and psychologically running them. And so he thought, they thought they were controlling him. So they, you know, they're like, well, I let you fuck her. You ain't going to leave me. You ain't going to go nowhere. And then they started liking Nipsey while she, Tanisha letting them fuck in the threesome. And he started liking them. want to have them around more. Tanisha want to jump on the bitch. And run the bitch off. This is what the man telling me. <laughs> I'm like, Nipsey, you want me to tell? He said, tell her. I don't give a fuck. Tell it all, God damn it. I said, okay. So she want to jump on the bitch. After he, she said he can play. And now you don't want the boy to play no more. Because you see they got a good pussy and dick connection. So she want to run him off. I thought it was just Tanisha. Nipsey done told me. Lauren gets gangster the same goddamn way. Oh, excuse me, Puma, baby mama. <laughs> and said so these niggas now in this game, because sometimes, Nick, you do have couples that do swing and they stay together. But usually couples that stay together that swing already know that they can handle that. And they know that they want to be together. They're not going to leave each other. When you try to control somebody and then introduce that to a man, you know the dick good and that pipe is fire. So I, tell, I don't talk no skinny nigga because you that pipe be fire and it be down they damn knee. You know, they look skinny and shit. All that weight gone down, you know what I'm saying, to they damn dick. 
So they felt like, oh, I don't want to let this go. They thought they could control him like that. And that man, you know, you don't be with a man like Nipsey trying to control to make them do something they don't want to do. It's not going to work with a man like that. That's why when you do that to somebody and you don't want to lose them, you need to try to manipulate and control them. That doesn't work. They'll be with you on their own. They're always going to pull away when you try to enslave and possess control somebody with pussy. And you know, I've seen him say that in, you know, in videos. I mean, raps, you can't control him with no pussy. That man mind deeper than that. He'll fuck the shit out of hoe. Fucks they ass down to the goddamn ground. But you're not going to control him with no pussy. He was smarter than that. He was higher than that. He wanted to help his community and build things up. He not going to get caught up and chase no damn pussy. Even though he enjoy it. Okay. So he's talking to me and I'm like, Nipsey, are you serious? You want me to say that about that girl? I, he took me up there in her bedroom. And this man was fascinated with the baby mama, and been wanting to fuck her, and obsessed with her, he likes the way she looks, she's a celebrity, you see someone you think is bigger than life, because you've seen them on TV, you've seen them in a magazine, he wanted to fuck her, and to say he did it, and this was Nipsey's girl, so you've been where Nipsey's been, so now you feel like you're equal to Nipsey, because you're fucking his ex, his baby's mama, and he's going telling people that this is what he's doing. Promising her the world. I'm going to do more for you than Nipsey. I'm going to treat you better. Yes, she got like sex demons. And she does tantric sex. Which is a form of magic to mesmerize and control men through sex. And have them. Because these are not high. Look like the best looking men or anything. So they think that she's doing them a favor. This is their dream. Their fantasy to fuck her. She knows that. So she's manipulating and using them for money and for contracts. Okay. One weird thing that also came out to me when he showed me this. And this is not the... Only one, allegedly, that I saw that's supposed to be Nipsey's friend that she's dealing with. He showed me she's not celibate since he died waiting on him. She's been having sex with other men. That's how she makes her money. And that's how she gets her contracts. Sleeping with men for money. Okay. A weird thing, I also saw that he said she is being controlled by Rock Nation. And then I saw a lady affiliated with Rock Nation. It looks like a Spanish woman with long black hair and dark eyes. They have a control over this baby mama and they control her contracts and her jobs. There's still another job she's supposed to do along with getting Nipsey's assets and controlling all money in. I could be wrong, but this is what sounded like I heard this man say to me last night. He said it a few months ago. He said it today. He's like, this lady doesn't care about anybody but herself. It is her job. This is how she makes her money. This is how she survived. They put her on certain men. And now she feels more secure because she has millions, I would say. A lot of money. And new contract deals from what she up due to Nipsey. That's what Nipsey say. And he's seen her have sex with other men. Allegedly, this is what I'm hearing in the spirit. He watched her have sex with other men. Some of these are affiliated with him and all money in. No, it's not Diddy. Diddy, I'm not saying Diddy's not one of them, but Diddy's not the only one. This is the lady's job. She cut herself off emotionally, spiritually, when she has sex with men that she don't like and that she's not sexually attracted to because that's how she survives. That's the role that they gave her to play, to come into that industry and thrive in that industry. I guess she don't know that he watch her. And when I come up the steps, for some reason I seen some, it looked like a gate. Like I saw the little boy come up there, try to go to his mama, and he couldn't get up the top step to walk on the highway to get to her room because she had a gate. 
Yes, I also saw her ginger that is was managing Nipsey now manage this lady and do PR for the baby mama. She in it too. She's a handler too. And now she's handling this for the baby mama. Uh, yes, this guy, and that's not the only one I've seen. For some reason, he's got light skin I've seen. He said, I'll tell you the ones Nipsey were messing with. And one of them, they say, is that model that TMZ caught him in the car with. The tall, slim, light-skinned girl that will model for Marathon. And say that she might have had a baby by him. If not, they said one of them marathon models that were modeling for the marathon store. Fold had had a baby by Nipsey. I don't know. Lord have mercy. Forgive me if I'm wrong about this. Allegedly, Lauren. Okay. She has some of them gang members from the 60s loyal to her. Because they know she got Nipsey money and handling it. And they want to impress her and be in her good graces to get Nipsey money. And get close to her and fuck her and like they her goddamn friend. This guy say, I know the girl name and how to contact him. Lauren dreading the girl. Allegedly, I mean Puma baby mama. Threatened several of them. And actually paid them off. Said, bitch. You better not come out in public talking about you got no baby by him or trying to claim no rights to Nipsey's estate or sue a nothing, bitch. Because, bitch, I'm going to kill you. Allegedly, that sounds like what I heard Nipsey say. She been threatening women. She seen up there she called herself Lady Hustle. So she supposed to be, I guess, the female nip. But I don't know if Nipsey going around just threatening no nickels and talking about shooting or jumping on or you can't come around. And this is not what he wanted. But she couldn't do it when he was physically here. She's, this girl is scared of her. And she has some of these gang. I just seen some blue shoot up. She has some. Yes, Ladonna. She has some of these gang members backing her up because they feel like they're gonna get money and benefit her. I don't know, Mary. If that's the one, it could be another one. They think and got a baby, and then they scared of her. Literally, this lady can be very intimidating and very vicious and got a fire-fire ass mouth. Got a nasty, vicious ass mouth. And is very still angry with Nipsey by fucking these bitches. And Nipsey told me, yeah, I, I was close to the marathon models and I was fucking some of them. He said, we just, you know what I'm saying, we had an understanding. She knew that. Yeah, like Queen Pen, I mean, that ain't even necessary. Because you not even legally married to that man. Don't run that man's shit. You, she just running what they give her over. A little piece of whatever. So I'm listening to him. He said, me and Tanisha. He said, I liked it, Tanisha. I love the Tanisha. We was very close. That was my dog right there. She had my back. She'd do anything for me. I had her back. He said we was friends. We were buddies. We was hustling together. We started out. He says Tanisha hold my dope. We were selling dope and we was prostituting bitches at the marathon. I... <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, last year, when I uh, did the Cowboy Part 1 and Part 2, I said they was prostituting not that goddamn marathon parking lot, but I know his ass was in it. I know he was trying to back up out of us and I don't want to do that no more. 
He said, I was. He said, but they was willing to prostitute for me. <laughs> he said, I didn't hurt them. I ain't beat them. You know, that was what they want to do. He said, they were escorting for a pimp, you know, for a player. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, I didn't hurt them. They, you know, he said, I was part of it. We were selling dope. We were pimping to come up. He said, Tanisha, her friends, you know what I'm saying? He let me, she let me fuck them. They suck me. You know, we have our group sex together and get high and shit. He said, we was cool. Yeah, Tanisha was a rider, but Tanisha was trying to use that to control that man. And then he said, she would get mad at him and talk to her uncle and shit about him and talk about him and tell his business and put him in a position where people want to hurt him. He said that she, she couldn't be trusted. And then she was fucking different niggas trying to show him, well, you can do it. I can do it too. And trying to hurt him. You know, she had two children on him. And he was he took care of the children that wouldn't even heal. And the fighting and the drama and want to hurt him, want to cut him and shit. He said he got tired of that. And he said something about Lauren, poor my baby mom. Tanisha was talking. They trying to trick each other. They trying to act like they like each other and get along, but they really want to get rid of each other and want to get him to marry them. He wasn't going to marry neither one of they goddamn ass. Because he know that they was just alike. One was just more famous celebrity on the red carpet as celebrity friend. Mom was just a more of an openly trashy level than the fucking other. They just alike. And liars manipulative and suck a dick up for they hiccup. And like they get high on that shit and knock that goddamn pee. Knock that powder and pop them pills and drink that liquor and suck two dicks at one goddamn time. And get fucked all in the ass. That, he got tired of that goddamn shit. And he started to evolve. He's like, I fucked it. Any kind of woman I want to fuck. I've been everywhere I want to go. Try whatever dope I want to try. Drink whatever look I He said, I did it all. And I started getting tired of that. And I wanted to evolve. Bobby, said, I couldn't trust Tanisha ass either. Both of them trying to out-fuck and out-suck and compete with the other while they smile each other's face to get rid of the other. And both of them almost got to fight. Man, you know, she's telling me all this goddamn shit. He said, I'm just going to come clean. I'm going to tell you every goddamn thing. I was pimping them hoes. He said, but they was also my friends. He said, they wanted to ride and die for me. You know, they love the neighborhood. You know? He said, you know, I, I love them my own way. I looked out for them. I ain't let nobody hurt them. He said, but you know, I didn't. He said, I really just felt like I needed to get right with God and the things I need to stop doing. He said, to get out of that life. He said, I didn't want to be in that life. And I, I realized those were not the ones for me. I wanted to go in another direction. He said, they wouldn't let him out. He said, but one of the girls was a female shooter and he liked having that girl around him because she would ride or die for him she was very cool i think it's one i she kind of got that vibe and i looked at one of them in that marathon commercial the real cute light-skinned girl with the way but yeah we was in the hotel room i'm not sure though so i don't want to put that on that girl worm girl's a female shooter he taught her how to have his back she never gave him no trouble he also told me something went on in Vegas. He showed me a hotel in Vegas looked like a big sewing needle up on top of the building. He said I was there in the hotel with a long like a needle up on top of the building. And I said, Nipsey, I don't know. I never hung out there. It's a needle on top of a building. And so I Googled it and I said needle on top of the building in Vegas. And I saw it. It is a casino in Vegas that looked like a needle real long up on the top. He said I was up there at like a penthouse suite or something. He said he was with some of the members of Our Money Inn. Allegedly. I heard him correctly. And some other people, he said they was pimping. They were escorts. They would go from Vegas 
you know, out there in Nevada, LA, New York, Atlanta, he say they would, okay, he says something went wrong. He was with this group, and this is some of them guys that been around Puma, baby mama, that's trying to talk about him and get on her good side and throw him up under the goddamn bus. They were doing illegal things in this casino. Because he's told me, he's been telling me this for months. I didn't want to get, I said, no, maybe I didn't hear him correctly. He said, no, I didn't do it. He said, but I knew I would be blamed. So I covered for them. Not only he mentioned to me these guys, they were in these casinos and they had these girls in there tricking these men and putting these men to sleep. Wealthy men, they uh, had to set up where they was called girls and put something in their drink or something, knock the men out. These were not all black men. Go through their pockets, bring it to these niggas. He said it was also, he says a ring of them and they was looking for them. The police or somebody was looking for them because they did it to somebody that they didn't know was a high-ranking person, a white man, they did this too. And then he said, downstairs in the casino, they had, it, it was some white people they worked with too. It wasn't just black people that they worked with because, you know, you know, they would have been picked up and questioned, probably had their ass beat and put out of there. Had some uh, decoys down there. It was really fucking prostitutes. Go to a certain machine and had the software set up where there's a certain one that go to it and was gambling in the goddamn casino and it would hit and get big, like get chips. Had to cash them in. Somebody working downstairs, when they cashed them in, got suspicious that worked there. They said they were scheming. They was finna come up there to the room, they had to hurry up and get out of there. Nipsey knew it was time to get out of there. They would have been killed. Fucked up. And see, this not the first time which would show they were doing high-level illegal shit and dealing with the prostitution underground. And also dealing with little child trafficking. Young girl and young boy. Trafficking and drug trafficking from L.A. to Las Vegas. Prostitution. It's like an underground network and it's still going on. And he mentioned something about heroin. Cocaine and heroin. So if you all know, I don't know. I'm not out there. Is heroin a drug of choice in California and Las Vegas? Yeah, LaDonna. That's just what he's telling me. There's secret drug crews. They're trying to hurry up and still hustle and get money. So all these rappers he was photographed with and he didn't even have a charted record. He was a target. Yes. And he also mentioned to me, I, I think this is what I heard him say. He had to hurry and get out of there that day because he could sense that there was getting ready. They were in a lot of danger and they could have been arrested and even killed because of the ones he was with that had pulled that in Vegas. Think, okay, meth and powder. Okay, so the meth and the powder. So what about the heroin out there? In Vegas, Nevada, uh, California, is there still, are people using um, heroin, any form of heroin out there along with the meth and the powder? Because he said there's secret cartels still trying to sell a lot of these drugs um, to make as much money as they can in the streets because it's so hot. And the things that are going on right now with the diseases and the death. He also told me that he didn't say anything about this. But he said he had been stepped to. By feds. And he had been warned. He said 2018. Because they tried to get him to turn. Like to be an informant. And they told him he was going to be killed. Thank you, Nikki. That his homeboys were talking about assassinating him. He didn't believe it. He 
He said, y'all just saying that because you want me to turn and you want me to inform and I'm not going to do it. And he said they warned him. Now, did, I can't believe because this is the first time Nipsey told me this. There's some things he's telling me now that he had not said before. I say, baby, what? So they told you? That's the step you, he said, because they wanted me to turn on them and inform me. He said, and I would not do it. And they laughed at him and said, do you realize that these people are planning to take you out? He said, and they mentioned the names of the ones that were involved and showed him the pictures. He said, and he didn't want to believe it. But he said, a part of him kept that shit in the back of his mind. And he started to notice little things. Then he started to get threatened, and then he is mentioning to me a house across the street from the marathon where he showed me they would sell dope and had drugs or a safe or something and money there. And he told me, and I didn't, you know, he's mentioned this to me before. I really get into it. The day that they murdered him, there was some type of a meeting. And he said they were questioning him. They were talking to him. He knew he wasn't going home. And the one I see is the one that a lot of you all have mentioned, the older man. I'm trying not to say his name. Begin with big. And he was asking Nipsey, you owe me money. What about the money that you owe me? Thank you. Heroin is huge in California, Vegas. Old drug that never slowed down. Thank you, Robetta. Yes, LaDonna. He said, you owe me money. And he was taunting Nipsey. He was demanding uh, you you need to pay me. And he was like, I don't owe you any money. And then you see the same man that I'm mentioning uh, a couple weeks ago, did an interview and got there and say, well, why would I kill Nipsey? I didn't have anything to gain. I used to manage him. Uh, I, You know, I didn't lose anything. I have no thing. I mean, he, we were not enemies. We still talked. You know, he texted me a day or so before he died. And um, I I didn't do that. I had no problem. But but I, you do. You did. You still do. You're jealous of him and you're older and they wouldn't listen to you. He was a new leader and you wasn't controlling him anymore. You wasn't getting money off of him. Hi, Mark. And he was there. It was older man there. And he was telling Nipsey, you owe me money. And he said, I don't. And they were like, you, you have to pay this money. And he was like, I don't have it. And, and, and I, how do I owe it to you? They put this bounty on Nipsey. Because they wanted to take his stuff from him anyway. And he wanted to get out and he didn't want to comply. And it was never enough. Everybody wanted something from this man. And you cannot feed everybody. And then a lot of these men were jealous of him because he was the one that was most popular in the gang. I know you're supposed to pay dues and give back to the gang. But every time he paid something and he kept being more successful, a lot of these niggas that couldn't make it on their own and be as successful as him as rappers, they felt like he owed it to them to give him his shit and to take his shit and to just feed off of him and just take and take and take instead of manifesting their own shit. A lot of this was about jealousy. And he couldn't see that these people were willing to kill him and that the jealousy breeded a lot of envy and hatred when they wanted to get rid of him and take his stuff, thinking that it was going to be better for them. And you see it's not. You see what has happened within this year that they did this to this man. It's gone totally downhill like I told you it would. And um, I hate to say this, but... They set the man up so that the man could not pay this bounty, this debt, like I had told y'all before. They were going to kill him. Puma, baby mama, was involved with going through that man's shit and helping to set that man up with them niggas and take that goddamn man money so that he couldn't pay it. And then act like she didn't know what happened to him. 
and then run in the hospital hollering, talking about that my husband. When you knew how to get to the hospital and his mama didn't even know where he was. How you know when you say you ain't know what happened? Now you want them to double back and give you the benefits of this man's death that you say you're grieving. And that you love so much and you did not know that what he say. That like he say when I see her rat now fucking man's. Allegedly, more than one. She get up there with that man necklace round her damn throat. Now I'm talking about she a public speaker. She's so spiritual. And you was grieving and you was mourning your husband and y'all gonna be together. You couldn't even be with the motherfucker. We were in here by today. You couldn't even control him when he went here by today. The man saying you a whore. How, how, how you gonna be with him? And be with him on the other side. When he said he walk over here. And see you getting fucked all in the ass. Up for contracts. And money. And that you being handled and controlled by rock. They tell you where you can go, what you can do, what you can say, what you can't say, what you going to get, and what you ain't going to goddamn get. That what he say to me, allegedly. You is just a pawn. You being handled. You being told what to do. Told to open your ass so you can screw. Get your contract, and on the dick and nuts, you will chew. That's what you took. See? Oh, I didn't want to say this. I'll say allegedly. Lord have mercy. That's what this man is saying that he's seeing. Taking ding dong like Donkey Kong. That's what he's saying. Then get out, hide that shit, and got your peoples and your friends around this and this gay man that you talk to that hide this shit. And act like you innocent and you hurt and you so sophisticated. And this man just look and just shake his goddamn head. You let the... See... Allegedly, Jesus, please forgive me, Lord, in heaven. I know it's getting close to Easter and Passover. Please don't let me be a liar. I ain't trying to keep up shit. They say I keep up shit all the goddamn time, and I'm messy as fuck. But, Lord, why, Lord, why? I don't I don't know why they say this shit on me because I don't want to do this. I don't want to be messy. Just like this other reader that attacked me. I wrote a poem on her. Pam, pussy ass and mouth. I didn't, I, I didn't say nothing else to her. And I didn't I'm put it out that that lady is fucking with me. Still saying shit on me. And saying that I'm starting shit. With Puma, baby mama. I'm trying to provoke. I don't even know this lady. Why well, I want to provoke this lady. She keep trying to provoke me. I wrote the one poem. I'm trying to let it go. Just a couple days ago, this lady is still got me in her mouth and fucking with me. After I had said that shit, and she still ain't went to the doctor, and she still ain't took her cell phone over her mouth and took a picture in the back of her mouth to prove that I'm wrong. And I said her teeth were broke off and scattered, smothered, covered, and missing. She still just don't want to squash this because she said I'm a liar. And you know, somebody had... Like Bonnie had sent me a text, like a picture 
of this lady Pam about a week or so ago after I had said that about her and talked about that wig cocked over that bang down on one side and jacked up on another. She went and took a picture and got a new wig. I had some big, wide, black shade, like some bumblebee shade on. And I looked at it, I said, well, you know that thing? I like that wig. That's a nice wig, like they had brown or something. And I said, but she looked like somebody. I'm trying to figure out who this motherfucker looked like with this new wig on. And them big old round black shades on her goddamn eyes. I said, why she got them big... Black ass shades on with that big ass damn stuffed bell pepper nose all over a goddamn face like that. And I kept looking at it, that wig. I said, I know who she looked like. Rudolph the Red, no reindeer, had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would even say it glow. All she needed two antlers on her goddamn head. That we, this fucker look. Hey, Rudolph, you want to ride my sleigh? All the other reindeer love him. That's she look like. You know what? I'm going to stop it. Lord, please forgive me. Easter egg time is coming up. I ain't have no business doing that. Oh, I did not have no business doing that. I'm sorry. <sighs> Bitch look like Rudolph. A light-skinned Rudolph. See, everybody light-skinned and ain't cute. That's a ugly light-skinned bitch. And some light-skinned folk think somebody jealous of them because they got them light-skinned. But you can see that ugly more clear because the bitch is light-skinned. That's an ugly yellow bitch. Man, that's one of the ugliest yellow goddamn submarine nose motherfucker I done seen. A sub sandwich down that subway. A wide, big, fat goddamn nose bitch. That's just yellow. That's all the wasted yellow at that. That's all. She just light-skinned. That fucker look like a wild animal. That's, you know what? Jesus. You the sinner of my soul. <laughs> All that's good and perfect come from you. I'm going to read my Bible when I get off of here tonight. Because <laughs> I'm not, I don't like shit. <laughs> I'm not messy. That bitch is a ugly yellow bitch. And I'm not jealous. I'm not saying it about that whole. I'm sorry, Lord. <clears throat> I ain't gonna say nothing else. I ain't gonna say nothing. I need to get prayer, Monica called. I done wrote another poem. I wrote another one about her. And I've been holding it. Because I didn't want, I, you know, I don't like shit. I'm not messy. <laughs> I'm not messy. I'm not. I ain't no messy. I know. But she keep on and sending messages out for it to get to me. Now, Michelle, I don't have no joke. I would, I'm not joking. That's what that lady looked like to me. The more I look, I said, she looked like somebody. I said, no, she don't look like somebody. This bitch look like something. Rudolph the red no reindeer, goddammit. All her no need to do is light up that. No, Gingy. It's late. I'm not finna get that poem on that lady. Look. I had no business saying what I said because I said I want to deal with Nipsey. I'm going to come back tomorrow night. We need to deal with respecting him and assassination. Then I'll get on the fuck shit. We'll get on the palm. Too bad Christmas done passed. Cause this whole Halloween, that whole costume need to be one of them goddamn reindeers. Now not one, the leader of the reindeer. Rudolph. That's her. Damn no. 
It just need to be red. Like her, she look like a red reindeer. <laughs> Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get her a sleigh with some rope on it and tie it around her throat. She looked like she got four legs. Been all Hell, Santa Claus drive that bitch up on top of the roof. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm tired of her fucking with me. I'm tired of these bitches fucking with me. Y'all see, I don't bother nobody. Bother nobody. Not, not fucking with that lady. I, you see, I have not said nothing. I, I, I have been trying to be quiet to mind my business. Saying nothing about that lady. But y'all keep on trying to agitate it. And secretly sending me messages talking about I got another poem. Another ghetto poem. I am sorry, Mary. I'm they keep fucking with me. And, and and talking about, do I have another one? Because that lady keep on saying little slick shit about me. And I said, no, I'm not going to say nothing. But then I just, somebody put it in there. That lady said some shit about me like yesterday or the day before. I'm in my own goddamn business. Kind of provoke me. Okay. I'm sorry, man. Oh. Uh. Trying to get back to the ring. I might just, you know what, I'm going to go now. I'm going to look back over it, see what else he got to say to me. I'm going to come back tomorrow. Because, <laughs> man, y'all got me wanting to go upstairs and get my palm. And I'm not, I'm not finna let the devil drive. You let the devil ride, the devil will drive. And y'all the devil, and y'all don't sit up and inch this shit up. I be done let y'all drive me up there to get the palm. And I'm not finna do that shit. I'm not, no, Trish, I'm not finna. I'm not finna. I'm not. I'm trying to be mature. Y'all asking me to do this high school shit on that lady. And that lady older than me and fucking with me. And y'all want me to join in. And and fire back. <laughs> what you said, Milan is just a oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, I ain't got to walk far to go get the pump. I'm not look, let's respect Nipsey for the next couple of days. I'ma read my Bible, Angelique, but see, I got the no, we're gonna respect Nipsey today and later on the night. And then after that, we can be silly. <laughs> She keep putting my name in her mouth, and I'm trying not to respond. You see, I have been good. I have not responded to the shit. Yep, pussy ass and mouth. That her she, Lucifer. Where to go? Where to go? Tell her to tell you to go get it. <laughs> Wait a minute, who car I need to ask Lucifer what for? Uh, what? Where it at? They already told me what mine was. And brought it back. So what, what else I need to add loose with the brain? Who caught? Y'all. See? You see what I'm saying? Y'all egging on the palm. Talking about palm, 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 palm. Finish Big Bird. I... Let's, like I said, let's honor Nip. We know she got a mental problem. I'm going to honor him. You said I tried to make this all about him. I had to throw it in. I kept looking and see what that. I said, who that hoe look like? Then I said, no, what that hoe look like? And then I said, that's who that motherfucker. And I said, that's just how I used to love Rudolph. And I would look. I used to love watching Rudolph on the cartoon. My grandma would turn it on there. I get excited. You see Rudolph going through the snow. 
And then it get nighttime, Santa Claus would turn Rudolph's nose on and light it. And Rudolph be flying, it be cheering like, yay, Rudolph coming down here. To see, man, she done fucked up the whole meaning, man. It done turned me off, man. I don't want, every time I see Rudolph now by the head, I'm going to think of her up. With that damn wig flying on. That damn biscuit, Miss Winter's butter biscuit. No, I, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, look, I'm not fucking with y'all. I'm not fucking with y'all. Mm-mm, I'm finna go. I ain't got no business up here with this bullshit. And y'all ribbing and luring me in to do this bullshit. I don't appreciate it. Because y'all trying to bring the devil out of me. And I'm trying to rebuke the devil tonight now. So, we'll go. I'm really gonna go. I need to get me some rest and I need to go in here and repent. Because I had no business saying that about that animal. I mean that lady. <sighs> now, nah, but you need to look her on that picture. I seen them glasses, that nose, and that damn wig. What that fucker look like? Ugly yellow bitch. Ow! I've seen some light skinned bitches. You know, uh, light skin. I'm like, that bitch light skin. So that bitch ugly as hell. It, I'm not finna get into what a wig say, Jacresha. Y'all not finna keep on luring me into this. Damn. I'm finna go. And I'm gonna come back later on and I need to get me a little rest. Ooh, this thing done wore me out. I want to thank y'all for joining me for AKT Celebrity Reads. But <laughs> it's, it's tight. One time my God said, dude, God ain't got nothing to do with this goddamn shit y'all trying to put me in. The devil had me write that shit and y'all trying to get the devil in me to go walk up there and get that shit. I'm, mm -mm. Mm-mm. No. Now I'm going to repent. We need to get this over and respect them, man. And then we'll come up and do some fuck shit in a couple of days. <laughs> Give me a couple of days. <laughs> I ran my son that shit. My son was hollering. I said, he told me, mm-mm. Mom, when you going to do part two? I said, mm-mm. I'm trying to be good. He started laughing. He told me, you got to read part two. No, I'm finna go to sleep. Finna let thank you, Alicia, for putting my cash app up there. And the Donna, y'all need to stop. Why what Nip got the Nip said I could do it, but let me get this done first. He messed it too. We say please remove me. <laughs> thank you, Pamela. Then Nipsey said I could do it. He messed it, but I'm just saying. Let me let us respect him first, y'all. Let him. He's going through a hard time, and he loves it when we love him. We give him attention. We give him offerings. Let me do it. We're gonna. I'm gonna come back tonight. We'll do part three, and honor him and love him because he needs all of the loving energy we can give him. Yeah, yeah, Michelle. But let let me do this first, and then we're gonna lay it. We're gonna have fun. Yes. Trish, he said I could do it, but I still want to be respectful to him because this is so bad, you know, what happened to him. And it's so difficult and it's so, such a deep level of betrayal. I want him to know that we love him and we honor him and we respect him. And so I just want to give him a lot of love and I'm glad you all are here to help me do it. And probably in a couple of days I'll come back and then we'll have fun. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be yeah, Arias. Yes, that's such a pretty name. I, I, I'm sure he's with his mom because he's been thinking about his mom really heavy uh, the past couple of weeks and she's been thinking about him and you know we can't even imagine what this lady has been going through every day since this is happening and bonding with her baby you know that's her baby boy and he's been with her uh uh Lanise y'all are so messy but then I think we got some time off right now and we on lockdown so we can have fun we gotta worry about getting up going to work and that <laughs> 
<laughs> we could be messy. Give him a couple days. I want to do one more night for him. I want it to be three nights to solidify, you know, with the number three. And it's very spiritual. So we're gonna, I'm going to come back tonight. I get a little bit of rest. And then after that, we're going to have some fun. Maybe I'll read you the poem. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Depends on how y'all act. Because I tell you, I can't keep coming to do all these readings. I'm just doing these publicly because he wanted them publicly. He doesn't. He didn't want me to put them private with only certain people to see. He wanted this to be known publicly. So that's why I'm doing these. But after this, I can't keep coming back. It's too much on me. Doing all the readings and putting stuff out for free and people are not consistently giving me donations to be able to do this. This is very difficult for me. So I'm only doing this for him. That's why I want to get this done. And then after that, I don't know when I'm going to come back to do any, or definitely not do public ones. I'm waiting for them to fix my site so that I can upload the new ones on the site. And then there is a monthly subscription because this is just kind of sick totally exhausted so and i understand everybody else is strained right now and exhausted but for those that can help me then it's only fair because i've given so much of myself and i've given so done so much work and given so much information so it's just reached a point now i, I can't it's not fair to me i've done whitney houston and i'm not going to do any more long readings especially not for free and, and put them out. I've already addressed Whitney. I'm, I'm not going to keep doing suggestions for people and they don't want to give me anything. Because that takes hours and days of research and put it out for free. I, I'm not. Too much. I've done this over a year. And when Nipsey asks me to do something, then if somebody else asks me to do something else, Nipsey's going to win. He's consistently wanting me to do his readings and put information out for him and people pick who they come to on a regular basis. So because he's come to me so much on a consistent basis, I'm not going to tell him no. So as long as he wants me to tell the story, I'm going to tell the story. So people jump, oh, do this person, oh, do that person, and you want me to do it for nothing. I can't do that. There are plenty of people that do readings. You can ask them to do it. Just because I don't do it doesn't mean nobody else will do it for you. But... He has been the one who has been the main one to ask me to do his work. And I'm very honored to do it. I've learned so much from that spirit and that soul in his life. And it's so painful to me to see what has happened to him. And I wish I could change it. Because he's still devastated. And there's so much pain. He misses his babies. He misses his family. He misses his life. Thank you, Shaggy. Yes, people did send me some. I, oh, no. I got to go, you all. I'll be back tomorrow. My battery is going out and there's nothing I can do about it. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in for uh, AKT Celebrity Reads. And I'll see you tonight. I love you. No, I'm probably not, not going to Patreon because they want a percentage of your money. No, I'm going to do my own website. I'll talk to you all soon. Love you. Good night.